Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friend, don't forget to subscribe, say that you like the video, and also press the bell so that you get notifications every time I make a new video. If you love Heidi, Cherry, and Vea, or Tucker and Leo stories, you can now get exclusive stories on my Patreon account. Go to the links below the video and you can join Heidi Cherry and Vea Club or the Tucker and Leo Club and get exclusive stories with your names in them. I love you all so much. Enjoy the story. Bye, friend. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Lie down in your bed and get super comfortable. Make sure that the light is just right in your room. You can relax your body and let go of your busy, busy day. Stephanie had had the best, best Christmas. She was sat at her dressing table. She was wearing her new spotted pajamas. She just woke up. She was brushing her hair and rubbing the sleep out of her eyes. She hadn't been to Mubo Forest for a few weeks. It was time to go. But first of all, she decided to get dressed. She put on some jeans and a sweatshirt. And she put her new clips in her hair. The ones that her mum had got her for Christmas. She loved them. They were snails. Stephanie had always liked snails for some reason. Most people don't like snails. You think that snails are just these slimy, sluggy things that you see outside in the garden or on the path sometimes when you go out for a walk. Some people actually stomp on snails on a purpose just to hear them squish, which Stephanie was always appalled at. To her, snails were something that were really, really cool. She loved the shape of the shell. And whenever she doodled, she either drew flowers or snails. She enjoyed the calming sensation of going round and around and around with her pen when she was drawing the snail shell. Stephanie opened her jewelry box. She grabbed a hold of her special magical earrings, the ones that she wore to go to Moombo Forest. She put the left one on first, and then she put the right one on stared at herself in the mirror for a moment before she closed her eyes. She felt the tingling sensation first in her fingertips. The tingling sensation that she knew was part of her experience Every time she put her earrings on, she felt the same thing. She would get that tingling sensation in different parts of her body. Sometimes it would feel very strong in her feet or in her nose or her hands. Today she felt it in her hands, especially her fingertips. And with her eyes closed, 
she could zone in on the sensation, make it even more pronounced. It felt like the end of her fingers were on fire, buzzing, vibrating. Scientifically, I suppose you could say, when Stephanie put on her earrings, it changed the vibration in her body. She had to change the vibration in her body to get to the other dimension. The other dimension, the other world, is Mumbo Forest. But she couldn't be a regular, ordinary self to get there. She had to raise her vibration. And this felt like a tingling sensation inside of her body. It was like her cells were morphing and changing inside of her fingers, inside of her body. They were speeding up. They were getting faster and faster. Like a bird flaps its wings. And then if you see a hummingbird flapping its wings, the hummingbird seems so much faster. That's what happened inside of Stephanie's body when she put on her magical earrings. She was changing inside, raising her frequency so she could match the frequency of Moonbow Forest. That's how she got there. And when her body had sufficiently vibrated and changed into a higher frequency, when her body tingled all over from her head to her toes and then her nose started to itch and twitch and she felt like she was going to sneeze, that's when she knew the veil was right there in front of her. The veil between this world and the other world. She pulled back the curtain with her left hand and stepped into Moonbow Forest. She felt the grass underneath her feet, soft but also crunchy at the same time. She whittled her toes around a little bit so she could get a sense of feeling connected to the ground underneath her feet. And then she opened her eyes. She didn't find herself in her normal, usual spot. Normally, when she went through the Vale to Mumbo Forest, she was surrounded by trees. And in those trees, somewhere out there, she would always see Luna and the other unicorns just hanging out with each other eating the peppermint grass. Today, she didn't see that at all. Today, when she opened her eyes, all she could see, all around her, were mountains. It was a beautiful day there in Mumbo Forest. The sun was shining brightly in the sky. She could hear the birds singing, there was a slight breeze in the air. But there was no Luna, no nightshade, none of the other unicorns in sight. All she saw were mountains. Mountains to the left, mountains to the right, and way, way far off in the distance in front of her were mountains that seemed as if there were miles and miles away. The mountains on the left were quite close. When she looked down at the ground, she noticed a path that led to the mountain on the left, and then a path that walked straight forward to the mountain that looked like it was miles away in front. And then there was another path that went to the right. 
to the mountain on the right. Three mountains. The one on the left was the closest one to her, and for some reason she wanted to just follow her intuition and go left. She started to walk on the path. The path was made of dirt. It was like an orangey tone dirt. And the mountain there in front of her on the left looked like it was a terracotta red mountain. Like a mountain that you would see in Sedona in the United States. Or maybe a mountain that you would see in the outback in Australia. It was a brownish, orangey red. Just like the dirt on the ground. It looked like a coppery colored chocolate, she thought to herself. I wonder if it tastes like chocolate. Stephanie stopped walking for a second bent over and picked some of the dirt off the ground. She put it in her mouth, after smelling it first, of course. It smelled like chocolate. When she put the chocolate, powdery dirt in her mouth, it tasted like chocolate, for sure. It was definitely chocolate. It tasted like a chocolate that she'd had one time when she visited England. A long time ago when she was small. The chocolate was called Caramac. It was like a caramel flavored chocolate. And this is what the ground tasted like. She reached down and grabbed a handful. She decided to just snack on it now and again as she walked on the path towards the mountain. It took Stephanie about five minutes before she got to the base of the mountain. And when she got there, she was pleasantly surprised. The mountain had what looked like a spiral path carved into it starting at the bottom and if you followed the path the spiral path around and around and around the mountain it looked as if it would take you all the way to the top the mountain was covered in snails the snails were all busy seemingly doing their own thing she walked up to the closest snail and said hello. The snail stopped what it was doing, moved its little antennas around, and then said, Hello, back at her. Stephanie said, Hi, I don't suppose you know where I am, do you? The snail said, You don't know where you are? Stephanie said, Well, yes, I know I'm in Moonbow Forest, but this is completely new to me. I've not seen this part. The snail said, You're in Snail City. Stephanie repeated what the snail said. Snail City? The snail said, Yeah, this is Snail City. Oh, said Stephanie. That's when Stephanie noticed that the snail wasn't that little. He was quite big. It was about as big as maybe like a Yorkshire Terrier. A really big snail. The snail said, I see you like snails. The snail was looking at Stephanie's slides in her hair. She reached up and touched them. She'd forgot that she was wearing them. Oh, yeah, I do, she said. 
That's so weird. That's so strange that I would end up here. The snail said. Well, not really. Maybe it's your slides that found the way here. Stephanie touched her hair slides again that her mum had got her for Christmas. Oh, wow, she said. That's so weird. Then Stephanie looked at the rest of the mountain. There was easily 200 snails on that mountain, all around the same size from what she could gather. Some of them were quite far away. Some of them were closer to the top of the mountain, so she wasn't 100% sure on how big those ones were. But all the ones that were close by were around the same size as this one in front of her. Stephanie asked what they were doing. The snail said, We're carving the path. We've been carving this path for about two months. It leads all the way to the top, all the way to the sovereign. Stephanie said, The sovereign? The snail said, Yes, the sovereign queen. She's at the top. You should go and see her. Maybe that's why you're here. And then, just like that, the snail put its head down and carried on munching away at the side of the path. Stephanie watched the snail for a little bit and realized that these snails were actually eating their way to the top. They were creating a path by eating the chocolate dirt. Maybe that's why they were so big, she thought. She didn't really question the snail and that she should go see the sovereign at the top of the hill. It just felt right. So Stephanie started to walk up the spiral path that the snails were eating and building at the same time. Every time she passed a snail, it would stop and say hello. They all seemed very friendly. They were very happy snails. I'm not surprised, really, with a diet of caramel chocolate dust. Stephanie went around and around and around, over and over again, until she reached the very top of the mountain. When she got to the top, there was a ginormous snail. This snail was oh, as big as a car. Stephanie presumed that this was the sovereign because the snail was wearing a crown and none of the other snails were as big as her. Closer towards the top, Stephanie noticed that some of the snails that were building the path were bigger than the one at the bottom, definitely bigger. But none of the other snails were as big as this one. The sovereign snail sat in the middle at the top of the mountain and there was a bunch of other snails at the bottom moving around. It looked like they were cleaning the floor, they were digging new holes, they were chewing new paths. And she just kind of sat there, very regal watching what all the other snails were doing around the base of her body. Stephanie walked over to the big sovereign queen snail. She coughed a little bit. She didn't quite know what to say to introduce herself. The big snail stopped. 
And then all of the tiny other snails that were all over the top of the mountain stopped. Everything stopped. Everything went quiet. Stephanie got a little bit more nervous. And then she said, Hello. That's all she could manage. The sovereign said, Hello, Stephanie. We've been waiting for you to get here. Stephanie smiled in relief. You have? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Your mum did very good at your Christmas present this year. We love the slides. Stephanie, once again reminded of her new hair slides, reached up and touched them and then said, Is there something about these slides that made it that I came here? The sovereign smiled. She had a twinkle in her eye. We'll just say that your mom buys very special gifts. For now, you should come sit with me. I need to teach you something. Stephanie sat down next to the Sovereign Queen Snail, looked up at her, and smiled. The Sovereign started to tell her a story. A story about the creation of snails. A long time ago, it was foreseen that there was sacred geometry in the formation of the creation of a simple snail. Stephanie looked at her and said, Sacred geometry? As if to say, what does that mean? The sovereign snail said, It's in the shape. The shape. You know, the part of the snail that you like to draw. The part where you go around and around and around, starting from the center, getting bigger and bigger and wider and wider as you go. That is called a nautilus. A nautilus is sacred geometry. It means it's a sacred shape. That shape is found in all things. You can find it in almost all things on earth and in the cosmos. The entire universe, you could say. The shape of a snail is sacred said Stephanie. Yes, it is. You'll see the shape of a nautilus in the middle of a hurricane. You'll see it in the shape of a cauliflower, the center of a sunflower. The formation of the seeds, they create a nautilus. It's the shape of pine cones. It's actually the shape of the universe. Stephanie said, wow, that's crazy. The sovereign queen carried on talking. The geometry of the shape is actually known as the golden ratio. And the golden ratio is found in all living things. Do you know what that means, Stephanie? Stephanie shook her head. That means, in a way, we are all connected. We all have the golden ratio inside of us. The geometry of that. 
The mathematical equation is in all things. How wonderful is that? Stephanie found herself staring at all the snail shells around her. Starting from the center, going around and around and around with her eyes following the shape of the shells. It's genius, said Stephanie. Do you know what else is cool about the shape of a shell that a snail wears, said the Sovereign Queen. Stephanie said, what? She said, the shape actually represents spiritual evolution. Stephanie didn't want to say that she was a little bit confused about what spiritual evolution meant, but it was as if the sovereign knew and could sense what she was thinking. She didn't have to say anything, the sovereign explained. Spiritual evolution simply means your awareness your sense of who you are, your spiritual evolution is really just all about your personal growth, who you start out as and who you become. That's it. Your spiritual growth is about diving into who you are as a person, being aware of everything about yourself. Now that is something worth diving into. Stephanie said, well, this is all perfect timing because it's a new year and Everyone always wants to do things that would make them better for the new year. New, new habits and things like that. So maybe that's why I'm here listening to this message. Maybe I just have to learn a little bit more about myself. The Sovereign said, Well, Maybe that won't be too hard because, obviously, you're a very special girl. You were already drawn to snails. And then she gave Stephanie the biggest twinkly smile. I'm glad you're here, she said. You can watch what we're up to. We're creating a whole little city up here at the top of this mountain. These snails have been working very hard for months and months. Enjoying the work, of course, because they get to eat. They get to eat everything that they run into. They are clearing a path, literally eating their way to the top. And then she giggled. Stephanie said, what are you all going to do in this snail city of yours once it's built? The queen said, oh, we'll invite all of our other friends. Luna's already visited a couple of times. She knew that you'd be coming today. She just thought it would be more fun to let you find your own way. Stephanie said, well, talking about all of this chocolate mountain, snail, caramel, eating, making their way to the top stuff has made me quite hungry. The Sovereign Queen said, do you like meringues by any chance? Stephanie said, oh, I love meringue. The Sovereign Queen shouted over one of the snails and the snail grabbed a hold of one of Stephanie's hands and started to lead her over to another side at the top of the mountain. 
At the other side of the top of the mountain, Stephanie couldn't believe her eyes. It looked like there was about ten treadmills all lined up in a row. There were snails on the treadmill, and the snails were walking on the treadmills, and then there were little buckets at the bottom of the treadmills that was collecting the snail slime. Yes, the snail slime, in buckets. And then there were other snails that were bringing the snail slime over to a little area where there was a bunch of snails whisking up the snail slime. And then there was another area where the snails were putting the whisked snail slime into little trays and putting them in the oven. And then there was another area where snails were taking all of these little snail slime things out of the oven and putting them over on a table to cool. Stephanie was led to the table where the things were cooling. She looked down a little bit apprehensive of what she was supposed to be doing over there. Snail? Slime? Meringues? Sounded pretty gross. The snail said, Do you want to try one? Stephanie said, <laughs> uh, um, Not really. The snail said, Oh, go on, you'll love it. It's vanilla flavor. Stephanie said, Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no thanks. The snail said, Oh, go on, you'll really like it. Remember everything that you see here, you can eat. Stephanie said, Even this? The snail said, Oh yeah, this is, this is the best. The snail kept nudging Stephanie forward, pushing her, encouraging her to try one of the snail meringues. What are these things called, she said. The snail smiled at her and said, Nautilus dreams. Nautilus dreams, Stephanie said. By now she'd picked one of them up. They were made in the shape of a snail shell. The shape of the Nautilus. She just went for it. She took a bite. Oh. Oh. Mmm, she said. The snail smiled at her. See? Stephanie ate five of them. They were delicious. Nautilus dreams are the best, she said. Stephanie was led back over to the Sovereign Queen Snail. She stayed there with her for a while, finding out that the Nautilus dreams were just one of the things that they prepare there with the snail slime. Sounds terrible. But it turns out it's absolutely delicious, so don't knock it till you try it. After a wonderful stay there at Snail City, it was time for Stephanie to go back home. She found herself lying in her bed, staring up at her ceiling fan. The first thing she did was reach up and touch her snail slides. Now, just like her special magical earrings. These slides were something that was very, very precious to her. These slides were like a doorway into Snail City. Of course, she still needed her earrings to get to Moonbow Forest, to get to Snail City. But she would be definitely taking care of her new hair slides, that's for sure.
The End